I just share with my colleagues that I'm withdrawing my name as a candidate for the speaker designee. The House of Representatives is speakerless as Louisiana Republican Steve Scalise dropped out of the speaker's race late yesterday, barely 24 hours after winning the nomination. Though the majority leader squeaked out a victory over Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, reaching the 217 votes needed to submit him as speaker, would prove a bit out of reach for Scalise. Here's more from Scalise. Uh, there are still some people that have their own agendas, and I was very clear, we have to have everybody put their agendas on the side and focus on what this country needs. This country is counting on us to come back together. There's no telling how the GOP caucus will rectify the inter-party fighting, but according to reporting from The Hill, House Republicans are set to meet this morning and possibly change the rules for selecting a speaker. House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, who was nominated for speaker by Democrats, is not sitting idly. He's making moves. Per Max Burns, a Democratic strategist, he's telling reporters and Repub or he's telling reporters Democrats and Republicans could come together to elect a consensus speaker, and that quote, it means partnering to reopen the House and changing the rules that were enacted in January that empower extreme members. Here to weigh in is politics reporter at Semaphore, Dave Weigel. Welcome. Good to be here. Thank you. So is it the case that uh, Scalise is pulling out, not because no one wants to work anymore, but because of this anticipated rules change? Uh, he didn't have enough support to become speaker. It was that simple. There, uh, Kevin McCarthy and Steve Scalise, long before this, were notable for how bad they were at corralling the, the I'd say, I want to say fringe, that's a little bit loaded, but corralling the most conservative members of their, of their conference. They have they lost a lot of key votes when they're in the minority. They lost key votes in the majority. Uh, they they have a small rump of Republicans that they sort of deal with by saying uh, these these are personal issues that you can't deal with these people. Uh, Scalise had the same issues uh, as McCarthy, and I think a little bit more opportunistic uh, opposition for people like Nancy Mace. He just didn't have. There is no one in this race at the moment who unifies most of the party. And with Jim Jordan, who we're getting to now, who has re-entered the race for Speaker, he is a conservative member who is best known for interrogating Democrats in the Oversight Committee, and there are moder more moderate Republicans who are worried that he'd be a loser in a general election. He's not as good a fundraiser as McCarthy. So that's their problem, just none of these, none of these guys have 217 Republican votes. Dave, I want to go back to that point uh, about Jim Jordan. So Jim Jordan's putting his name back in the ring. He's making phone calls. I mean, I, I know many individuals that are pretty intricately involved with this process. Do you see it being possible with McCarthy being the only person to at least get to 200 votes? Would it be possible for McCarthy to be renominated and then the majority of the conference changing the rules to permit a simple majority to approve the speaker? Because this idea of 218 is a relatively new, mm -hmm. new notion. This isn't something that's cemented in House rules. Yes, it didn't look like this morning they were going to go to that change. They were not going to require enough votes to go to the floor with a speaker designate mm -hmm. because they can't get one. Uh, it, it's just that they're, they this is a problem that McCarthy had in the past of announcing that they're going to go ahead with something before they have the votes for it. They just can't keep slipping on that banana peel. Uh, so there are people who do not have this, this many enemies in the conference. Um, what they're grappling with is that the conservative entertainment wing, if you want to say, and I'm not being pejorative, it's just a real, it's a factor in this race. Uh, they have their problems with most of the people uh, who might be speaker mm -hmm. with Tom Emmer. You will have Republicans uh, outside inside the house but mostly outside of it commentators who say why i can't believe we have a speaker who uh didn't vote to challenge the 2020 uh the 2020 election uh with jim jordan you have a lot of support from conservatives outside of you have from donald trump but also charlie kirk people like that and the same problem from these the not even moderates but just republicans from biden districts who think that is a losing strategy for them to to win in 2022 uh that's the that's the issue. You see, everyone whose name is put forward is shot down for some reason, some heresy that they have had in the past. No one is really viewing. I wouldn't say nobody. The the, the problematic members who are not providing the, the 218 uh, are not viewing the speaker as just somebody who can run the votes and do the job. They have both substantive changes they want in how in how uh, the next round of spending bills are introduced, what kind of cuts they're demanding. Uh, and they don't, and they have ideological differences. And there's just enough of those people where none of these candidates satisfy them. 
It sounds like we can understand this as the faction of the Republican Party known as the Freedom Caucus exerting their power mm -hmm. to remove McCarthy from the speakership because they made some deals with McCarthy. It sounds like Biden made some deals with McCarthy as well, and he didn't make good on those promises. To me, this sounds like uh, the Democratic consensus, if we care about which direction our representatives are voting on the issues, uh, whether it's budgeting mm -hmm. or what have you, that the proposal from Matt Gates of piecemealing uh, those votes is the, the most democratic way forward. And it sounds like a group of people are exerting their support in the direction of its, its minority rule, essentially. And the speakership is being mm -hmm. used as a bargaining chip in that endeavor. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up what Gates has actually asked for because his problems with McCarthy, uh, which McCarthy says are personal, McCarthy, Gates has listed some things that are not personal. They are those individual votes uh, not rolling things together in an abyss, things that McCarthy had promised at the start of the year. McCarthy's problem, he had many problems in this job. One is he he sort of had an SBF situation where he he promised a lot of people a lot of different tokens and a lot of different things, and then when they came to collect them, he couldn't give them to everybody. Uh, he could he couldn't deliver for uh, the 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 Gates wing of the party these th these reforms he promised. He couldn't deliver some of the moderates. Uh, he could deliver a, a a continuing resolution that funded the government because uh, they weren't interested in these reforms, but he promised something to everybody and he couldn't deliver. Uh, you're right, though, that what Gates has asked for and what some of the people who get called hardliners have asked for are things that Democrats, even in the House, say they would not mind having. If you had talked to Ro Khanna about those reforms, they didn't love every aspect of the Pelosi years and how much control was exerted by the Speaker on the agenda. There, There is the light at the end of this process on the reforms that, that would make some Democrats happy uh, you know, they're out there. There's just not one figure who most to enough Republicans agree on to go to the floor. The only figures who do agree on that would, would become speaker with some Democratic support. And that's something, I mean, this is what happens day after day of people arguing and negotiating and punching themselves out. They might get there, uh, but, but that's a really good point that there are some reforms that are not necessarily right wing. They're not, not, not freedom caucus reforms. They're just changing how the House works reforms that could entice some Democrats to vote for somebody who is not in the race at the second. It wouldn't be a Jim Jordan, it would be somebody else. So David, you mentioned some of those reforms uh, that Gates required. Uh, Jim Jordan voted for Speaker McCarthy. Uh, Thomas Massey, who's actually uh, one of the founders with Jordan of, of the Freedom Caucus, and Massey is perhaps one of the most conservative members uh, of the Republican conference, right. generally speaking. Uh, so, so with all of those things in mind, what type of political turmoil does this put Republicans in, in terms of maintaining their House majority in 2024, let alone increasing that majority? That's a question that a lot of Republicans who want this to be over with uh, lead with, that lead with by asking, saying, how does this look to people? I, I, the polling thus far is actually not negative about what Republicans did last week. If you looked at it, it was YouGov CBS put up polling last week asking what voters thought of, of McCarthy getting dumped. 60% of Americans said they had no problem with it. Uh, it was a very sl slim majority of Republicans, slim majority of conservatives, but a majority of Democrats, majority of independents were fine. Um, there is a sense among these Republicans, you talked to Mike Lawler, as I did uh, during this process, who say the, the, the impression of chaos makes us look, makes us look bad. It, it's going to make it harder for us to get reelected. But people have very short memories. Uh, I remember the chaos that Republicans looked like they were in when John Boehner resigned and Kevin McCarthy, once again, maybe they should have learned their lesson, was in line to be speaker and couldn't get it. If you look back at the headlines from the time, the word chaos shows up, the word mm -hmm. disarray shows up. What they end up doing is picking Paul Ryan uh, and having a better 2016 election than any of them thought they were going to have. So there's a chance for them to get out of this. And that's, again, th th there's some people, Nancy Mace uh, keeps coming up as somebody who's who's desires are very hard to read because they change from day to day. But some of these <laughs> conservatives in the conference want stuff that they are very confident. If you if you go back and explain to voters, hey, it was messy. We had to shut things down for, not even shut the guy in the government, shut down the, without a speaker for a couple of weeks, but we got you these reforms. I don't think they're wrong. I mean, just covering races around the country, I have not found voters as concerned uh, with whether there's going to be a speaker, who the speaker is going to be, with, as with any policy come out of con Congress. I think the conservatives who say that voters are more concerned about spending, totally correct. And you can look at the polling if you don't believe them. 
It's been fascinating to see Ro Khanna introduce his plan. He gave the, the speech on the floor about weeding out corruption, that Americans are just fed up with corruption in Congress. He specifically introduced his plan to remove uh, any members of Congress from the ability to accept lobbying money, to trade stocks. And he also wanted 12-year term limits. And Matt Gates responded saying he'd remove his motion to vacate if we move forward with Ro Khanna's plan. Is that still, do you think, on the table at all here in the negotiation for speakership? Yeah, I don't think anything is off the table. Look at the dynamic of reporting this. I mean, something can be discussed, it sounds good, and then if four Republicans come out of the conference room and say they don't want it, already it's it's on it's on it's on its last legs. It, it can't happen. I mean, I think there has been a shift in the way uh, media is interpreting this. When Mitt Matt Gates was threatening to use the motion to vacate. It seemed, well, he says that a lot. It's hollow. We're now in a, we're in, a, in a place where people can say, all right, four, a handful of Republicans can sink this. But I think it, it still is uh, a possible way out of this. Uh, when you see a nego- there has not been a negotiation like this really ever, with a speaker being ousted in the middle of, of the term and then having to find a new one without any Republican who's a consensus choice. So I'm not ruling out anything like that, uh, that a bunch of people could wind up unhappy because Democrats... Uh, in order to get some of the things they wanted at this point, it's mostly, you know, funding the government, funding uh, aid to Ukraine, got a couple things they wanted. It, is, it makes sense. And if you cover a state legislature, uh, which there are 50, this happens sometimes, and it is not a gigantic crisis. This usually happens, it ends with the minority party cutting a deal to get some of the stuff at once. It happened in New York not that long ago. It happened in Texas not that long ago. There is a way through this that just seems alien to anyone who's been elected to Congress at this this bigger stage and higher level who don't want to give up anything. Uh, really quickly, David, before we let you go, in all of this chaos and craziness, as you've mentioned, we've been here before with Boehner, with, with Ryan, who do you think Republicans will choose? Because it seems every name that comes up, the person fails to get to 217 or 218. Yes, that's a great question. I, I can see Emmer who... Uh, checks most of the boxes that that Republicans want, having the few, the least enemies. If he if he goes for, a, if if Jordan cannot corral the votes together and he goes for it, it would be a promotion for somebody who Republicans know, who Democrats don't like and have run against, uh, and probably wouldn't offer much to them. I can see that happening. Uh, it is h- harder to imagine a Tom Cole, somebody the Democrats like quite a lot, that might agree uh, agree to this stuff. But I'd say one scenario is somebody like Emmer who. Uh, you could eventually get 217 Republicans to go for uh, with concessions or so, that, or someone, someone like Cole would be a situation where they can't do it and they're electing a speaker with a rump of Democrats, which, again, looking ahead to the 2024 election, that's new. It wouldn't have happened before. Um, and the record for that being unpopular with voters, I mentioned those state legislative situations, is not very high. I mean, but, sorry, being unpopular with voters is not mm-hmm. is not that bad. Like voters, if they see the government getting some stuff done and they don't need to think about it and it looks like two parties came together to, to fix something, the response usually, unless things go terribly wrong, the economy collapses, is, all right, they figured it out. I can I can move on with my life. Most people around Maybe the country, are, as fascinating as this is, <laughs> not that interested <laughs> in the power play. <laughs> Yeah, maybe the whip can get those votes together for the speakership faster than Kevin McCarthy could. Thanks so much for coming on and breaking this down with us. We have more rising after this. Thanks. Thanks so much.